On this week's show, we're going to be looking ahead to the Australian Grand Prix, covering all the storylines to look for going into the weekend, and of course, making our predictions. Let's go. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Back of the Grid. I'm your host this week, Tom, and I'm joined by Chris. Hello, I'm ill. I'm sorry I sound like this. I mean, technically, you sound slightly better despite being ill, thanks to your new microphone. Yeah, did your old microphone have like the ill filter on it all the time? <laughs> you never worked out how to turn it off. It turns out I said exactly the same. Yeah. <laughs> that other voice you heard is the one and only Stu. Oh, hello. The one and only. The one, one and, and only. only. There's only one. Chesney Hawks. Is that Chesney Hawks? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, come on, come on. Let's let's make a podcast. <laughs> Look, we we already know going into this. This is one of those weeks. Um, yeah, so this is going to be like a pint-sized version of Back of the Grid this week. <laughs> I think um, we're going to run through some storylines going into the weekend, heading into Australia. So some things that have maybe of interest, like tires, obviously. Oh, um, tires, great! And among among other wait. things, this weekend you're wasting internet, Tom. You're wasting what, talking about we're talking about again. tires. We're wasting tires internet. Again. We're always wasting internet, friend. You know that. Um, we'll, we'll we'll make our predictions, like I said, and we've got a couple of bits of inbox. So, um, I mean, which of the many storylines that we actually do have would you guys like to touch on first? I think let's start at the top. Start at the top of the list, then work our way down it. Just for simplicity, just for ease of ease of use. <laughs> okay, so the, so the probably the main one is we're expecting science back, but as of right now, we've not had confirmation of that. They keep using words like expected and probably, but they're being non-committal. But he's there. He's doing media stuff. So mm-hmm. I think mm. odds are pretty high he's going to be back in the car. Yeah, I think he'll be back. I'd have thought so. Like, was, did he have? Did he end up having an appendectomy? He did. Okay. It's like keyhole these days, though, isn't it? Compared to yeah, once yeah, upon yeah. a time. It's not like the. the it's not like when I had it not done. <laughs> <laughs> but if you listen to last listen to yeah i won't tell yeah. that again. listen last to last week's episode. episode again if you want to know about my appendix experience as a four or was it in the the post show post show in this card no just in like full show just, no just, it was just in the show, oh, in there, part of the show. one of their it's weird attendants oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> but yeah given given the album was back in a car like six days after he had his done i think i think science will be fine yeah 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 so um I'm not really going to get into detail about the alternatives. I mean, it, if the worst were to happen and science couldn't um, couldn't drive this weekend, it will most likely be um, be, Be-, be Behrman yeah. that replaces him. Um, I mean, Schwartzman's on the list. Giovinazzi are on the list. They're kind of back up and back up, back up. But yeah, because they be were Behrman, both, wouldn't it? It would yeah. be Behrman, realistically, because it was only Behrman at the last race because Schwartzman and Giovinazzi were doing. Uh, there are. Sebring 12 hours, I think, they were at last weekend. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 10th they must they're all available this weekend. They must have been gutted. I know, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I sit around all, all this time. Florida. <laughs> and I could have Just been driving a Formula the 1 car in garage doing nothing, and then the one time they're actually needed. Yeah. The, um, I wonder how many eyes will be on F2 this weekend uh, if Behrman isn't the <laughs> yeah. person in science. Like, with just anticipation of okay, so we've seen what he can actually do in F one. Like, let's let's go study F two a little closer now. Like, I'd be interested to know like how many people are suddenly a bit more interested in F two after that experience. Oh, I bet last, they will. Last yeah. time out, especially they've in picked the UK. a good year. Yeah, they've picked a good year to get into it. If um, well, if, yeah, if they are getting into it this year, because it, it does look like a should be a good season. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and there's a. Ironically, he's got way more points in F one than he has in F two yet, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He would have he would have done pretty well, I think, last weekend if he'd done F two race. He would have got some decent points, Which probably. But I mean, supposed you could, to be pole anything sitter, can happen, can it? I suppose. But yeah, he was on pole, so he, yeah. he he had had a good measure of that track, which I think probably helped him a lot in the Formula One race as well. I think, as a side note, I think that's quite cruel that he's on zero points because you get two points for pole position in F2. But because he withdrew, he was he was withdrawn from the event, so he didn't get oh, to keep his two points for pole, which is... Shame, isn't it? Like, he was that's there. He, he was there. He did it. Surely he should get to keep his couple of points. That's outrageous. Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, the, the way they apply some of these rules across... It's bizarre, isn't it? sport is just strange, isn't it? Yeah. Um, anyway... Well, 
I mean, it is going to be a shame, especially if it comes down to like those couple of points at the end of the season and or maybe the handful more he would have got from the races as well. Like if it comes down to that and he maybe doesn't quite make a title because of it. I mean, it would be peak Ferrari if that happened to him, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> Although yeah. having said that, in like in the opposite side, the uh, the performance in the in the Ferrari and the points he gained in the Ferrari are probably a heck of a lot more valuable to him than the points he would have gained in an F two car. Yeah, if you in if terms you offered of him, himself in that shop window, I think if before the season you offered him. You only finish second in F2, but you get your F1 debut. I think it snaps your hand yeah. off. He's yeah. probably got enough points to not finish last in the Formula <laughs> 1 season. As oh, as yeah, as without that. a doubt. Yeah, there is that. I've not even thought about that yet. <laughs> Jeez. Right. Uh, yeah. What else have we got on the list? Uh, um, I mean, the gap. Now, this is a another change in circuit compared to where we've been before. Um, how do we feel about the Red Bull gap? I mean, it's a lot hmm. of there's a lot of slow speed on this circuit, which obviously is going to suit some cars more than others. I imagine Aston Martin will probably be. Ah, then again, the Aston Martin doesn't seem as good in slow speed this year as it did last year, does it? Because mm. they were right up there in Australia last year. Okay. Um, Do you remember? Was it the Astons that did, however, have a really good traction out of? slow speed in the first couple of races in like Bahrain. Yeah, they're still not bad there. Um because mm. I mean now now they've reprofiled Albert Park, it probably is a bit closer to a Bahrain style circuit where it's all it's low speed and medium speed. Um there is some it's not, pretty, it's, pretty big high speed stuff in there as well. Yeah, I guess that new section's pretty high speed as well. That, that middle, everything's it's really high speed. sector's really fast now I would say. Do you know what I I really hated this new layout when they first announced it. I love and it. And then they raced there and I was like, oh, actually, I'll take it all back. Yeah, I've nailed rad. it. This I is think great. It's way better. Way, way better. Get yeah, him, get, right. Let them get yeah. some speed up. Let them, you know, the point of a Formula One car is fast corners. You want really fast corners yeah. that, that show what a Formula One car, one car yeah. can do. That's why Maggots, Beckett's, Cops, all that. Yeah. Out at Silverstone are just brilliant places to watch Formula One cars. So I was just worried they were killing overtaking opportunities, but last mm. year that didn't seem to be the, the case. So. I think the biggest improvement that I'm looking forward to seeing again this year is probably, I want to say it's turn nine that used to be a chicane and is now one of the more sweeping S's. Yes. At the, the, at the, nine and ten. Yeah. Is that at the end of, like, around the back of the lake? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a you, really it used good to be, It used track. to be what was generally a fairly clumsy right-left chicane because... Yeah. It wasn't really good enough to make an actual move on, and the move tended to get made with who was fastest on the throttle coming out of the left hander and going down that like slightly curved back. I want to call it a back straight, but it's not a back straight, is it? Because it's curved. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was about who was fastest out of the corner rather than being able to make a move going into it. So that's probably like the peak of the upgrades for me. Yeah, that, that I mean section that's changed. <sighs> Again, looking at that sort of section of track, the Red Bull's just going to be unbelievable through there, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's going to yeah. be almighty. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I mean, there's plenty of other corners where you know people people will be able to keep up with them. It's just obviously, I mean, obviously Red Bull are going to run away with this. I think. I think it's based on the last two tracks. I can't see a world where. I think they might be kept honest in qualifying. I think it's possible that they might not yeah. be on pole. But I um, so. but I think race pace wise, they're just they're so much kinder on their tires than all the other cars. That's just gonna yeah. make it makes such a difference. So. Yeah, and then yeah. that's that's kind of scary in the sense that teams like Ferrari have made such steps forward in that area that Red Bull have also made the same steps and just gone even yeah. further into being able to manage the tires more effectively, which is just crazy. I think yeah. if if Red Bull are going to be beaten, it's going to be because this track really punishes mistakes and safety mm. cars and red flags are pretty common. So I think something like that could cause them to slip up or could cause, you know, maybe they get unlucky with safety car time and something like that. But I think it's going to take something like that, which this is the kind of circuit it can happen at. Yeah, a lot, lot yeah. of walls to be made contact with. Mm. Yeah, and then, but then lots of like run, like runoff in terms of like grass runoff and stuff, True. gravel traps, that kind of yeah. thing. I, like, I think, I think you've got the. I always find with 
Albert Park that there's like the sort of just the right balance of yeah. all those aspects. Like there are corners with grass or gravel runoff that mean you are going to seriously struggle if you bin it in one of those corners. Yeah, There's exits that are very close to walls. Um, and if you cock up that exit, you are damaging the car on the wall. Um, but then there's also areas of the little bit more lenience where you, you can kind of run a bit wide and get wheel to wheel and, you know, jostle each other around. Like it, it's, it's always been kind of how it's a bit like uh, Montreal in that regard. Like there's one, why would that circuit like, is always up there for me is one of my favorites because there is just that nice mix of these bits that have got real jeopardy, but then there's other bits that are a little bit more forgiving and you can kind of take a bit more of a risk and you rather than just being constant walls like Monaco or constant runoff, like a lot of circuits. Now this has kind of got one of the few that's still, yeah. that's got the balance in between the two. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I think as well, it's, it's one of the more, it's probably the prettiest race of the season i think in terms yeah, of like think, a yeah. you know scenery wise around the track and around the circuit and looking at you know across at the city skyline so and stuff what it we're looks saying really pretty and is, the time of day sorry the time of oh, day yeah. that they run the race yeah. as well as like golden hour the sun, as they the sunset. as they were really yeah. starting to set and so towards the end of the race all the cars just look amazing on, on a <laughs> sunny day they just look so so nice it's great so what it. we're saying with montreal and albert park what we need is just races round public parks hmm. that surround lakes. Yeah, Battersea so. Park. Get them to Battersea Park. That's, no, we, no, the locals will love it. <laughs> no, right, I'm going to move us on to something else. Um, just as last point, I'm really wrong. glad Australia is going to go back to being the season opener. Um, yes, yeah. not for me. This is but... this race coming up now is the season o- season opener for me. This is the real <laughs> yeah, yeah, start of the Formula this One is season. It. This is the real one. There are exhibition yeah. races before. We're, we're starting yeah. properly now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if only. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, moving on to another team, Mercedes. Um, do we think that this circuit's going to punish them? Um, yeah. And do we think they've been able to do anything at all between being in the Middle East and now being here to improve that situation? Yeah, I think yes to both. I think okay. 9 and 10, are, they're going to be looking at 9 and 10 and going, oh, I don't like look at that, but... <clears throat> yeah, I think they obviously they've said they're going to do some exper- They've got some experiments lined up to do with uh, with their car, with some setups, changes, and things to see how they if if there's anything they can do to identify where this lack of correlation they've got is is occurring um, compared to sort of their models in the winter and on things. But um, there are, you know, there are steps you can take to, I think it's going to be a research project for them. A lot of this race mm. weekend, I think it's particularly through practice, you're going to see them in and out of the pits a lot, make lots of set yeah. changes and, and just seeing what they can do to try and iron out these bugs they've got with high speed corners. But, um, you know, if any team can do it, we've, we've seen them do it before. And if they can do it, you know, that car is quick everywhere else. We saw that last last race. That car is quick in lower medium speed. They just mm-hmm. need to get high speed corners licked. And if they can do that, then, you know, they, they, they should be more or less in the mix with Ferrari, maybe even a little bit quicker, maybe slightly slower, but they'll be, they'll be around. And then, you know, if those two teams can then develop in tandem <laughs> at the same time, not in tandem, obviously, but if they can then start to reel in Red Bull without too much conflict among those two teams themselves, then we might mm. be in for a bit of a decent season, might salvage a decent season out of what is at the moment looking like a bit of a Verstappen whitewash. Love that we're saying that in two races. <laughs> it, I mean, it does look I like mean, way, it, it does at the minute. Yeah. It does at the minute. It's hard to argue with it, to be fair. But you're right. Like, if you looked at the Hamilton's onboards when he was behind Norris in Saudi Arabia, like... Hamilton would be right behind him until they got sort of yes. past the first couple of corners and then Norris just disappeared. And then over the rest of the lap, Hamilton would reel him back in again and be behind him for the start finish straight. And then he just disappeared again. Like yeah. it's not I'm... fundamentally a bad car. I don't think it's just this high speed issue that, and it is yeah. a correlation thing, like something in their winter on their CFD has told them one thing and the real car is doing a different thing. That, yeah. that middle sector 
around the top of the lake is going to be really difficult for them. Oh, it's going to be brutal for them. But yeah, 9, 10, 9, 10 to, is going to be, yeah, well, I mean, be suffering. All that bit that's got reprofiled, you've got the this, the the chicane before 9 and 10 that got reprofiled that was like 6, 7 oh, and 8. Six, that's, seven, yeah. that's a lot faster than it used to be, isn't it? Like, it's not high yeah. speed, but I think... Well, they might be Just all right from through there, there I... all the way down to turn thirteen, where you've got the the next like real breaking zone, isn't it? Like that yeah. whole sector from seven to thirteen is, well, is like on it. So, yeah. But you know what? In the position Mercedes are in right now, it's probably a good thing that they're going to another track that's got some corners that are going to show up their problems because at least they can. Mm work on yeah, fixing true. them for the rest of the year like yeah that's it like they can how, they can identify they can use those corners to identify how those weaknesses are occurring and then hopefully you know put efforts into solving them are yeah. we going for any bingo squares of flovis on the mercedes during f <laughs> session oh, they'll, be, they'll be they'll be it'll be slaved but they've yeah. they've got the spe- did you know mercedes have a special flovis that's supposedly invisible you can see it but like it's oh, a lot harder like, to see like it's like a uv light. yeah you yeah. have to use a uv light on it to see it yeah um make of that what you will next uh... um, <laughs> it, interesting as well i think on mercedes kind of struggles i think they're sort of it seems like they know that they are uh, have had a bit of brain drain in recent years, and it seems like they're trying to turn that around. Like their recent hires have all been on the techie side. Like they've just announced that um, Simone Rest is going to be joining them as uh, a yeah. development director. Um, so he he was at Ferrari since like two thousand and one, and then he was kind of loaned out to Sauber and then Haas in recent years. Um, and he actually used to work with. James Allison at Ferrari when James Allison was there for a couple of times as well. So that's pretty decent hire for them. Um, And they've also got the guy who was head of Ferrari's simulator team to be there. What was it? Head of performance software applications. I think that's like the more interesting hire for me. Yeah. Because like that's clearly if there's correlation issues with the winter and reality, then, you know, that's the person whose job it's going to be to sort of try and minimize. You never, you know, you can't create, yet you can't yet create perfect simulation of how fluid dynamics work in the real world in the digital environment yet you will be able to eventually but we're a long way off it now um and they need someone who can get them closer to that like that you know those little million factors closer to being a better better Mm -hmm, performance environment virtually so that they can replicate it slightly better in the real world and hopefully get better results uh, moving on, our first race of the season that has some hometown drivers. You've got obviously Piastri, but also Ricardo. Um, <laughs> Piastri's had a decent enough start to the season. Probably a very good opportunity to pull some decent points in front of a home crowd. Ricardo, on the other hand, not had such a great start, especially when you compare him to Sonoda. Maybe the home crowd can help him get a good you know, get the season off the ground. Thoughts Maybe they'll help his pit crew not give him a delayed, really delayed stop. <laughs> Other, I mean, there's that. <laughs> yeah. We always say the hometown is worth like, what is it? Five tenths? A couple of tenths. Um, yeah. I think, I think Ricardo, obviously it would have been nice. I don't feel like Ricardo's quite hit the ground running the way he might have hoped that he was going to at the start of this season. But this, you know, home race early in the season, it's an opportunity for him to have a bit of a reset and just you know, hopefully have a good result and then use that to build his confidence and ride it into the to the opening races of the season. The other just, opening races of the twenty four race season. <laughs> I've um I've just seen Jose in Discord chat basically going along with my predictions methodologies and saying, Hometown drivers, don't you mean the first two DNFs? <laughs> <laughs> Savage. I did Two see a list away. recently of um, Ricardo's home race results, and it's <laughs> it's not pretty reading. <laughs> I remember the first, it was his first race at Renault, I think, and he got a little bit out in the in the grass coming down the start finish straight, and he basically didn't make it past the pit exit because yeah. a grey oh, or yeah, a lump in the grass or something caused him to bounce, and it just took the front wing out underneath. Yeah, the bar, it's, and it was, it, it it was, was where the grass turned to. There was a concrete strip yeah. that ran into the pits to, just for one of the gates into bounced. the pit. And yeah, it bounced off of it. That was kind of hairy, hairy. hairy. Yeah. It was it was amazing that he didn't 
take out half the field like when he yeah. got to turn one because somehow managed yeah. to make it through without taking one out anyone out i think i can't really remember yeah i think so now, but... i'm pretty sure it was just a self yeah i think it was cell phone yeah um, self, uh... i think yeah. honestly i think piastri might be an outside bet for a podium like Ooh, nice i, like I can see the mclaren being all right at this track um mm. He seem he already seems a lot more on Norris's race pace, um, mm-hmm. and probably better in qualifying in the two races this year. I think he certainly out qualified him in Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Arabia. Yeah, I Can't think he may have been around Bahrain. Bahrain, Bahrain. As well. um, yeah, he's on that. Yeah, pace, I mean that'd obviously be awesome to see. But I can see McLaren being being well up there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then uh, one of the last key ones, um, can anyone in Formula 1.5, as it will <laughs> start to become known soon, manage to claw their way into the points? Yeah, so we we're talking... have this top five, bottom five, don't we? Like, Yeah, we two races in, we're definitely getting a bit of a, these five teams are the ones that are shoo-ins for points. These five teams yeah. are looking for scraps of anything that happens higher so up. So we're talking so. Haas, Williams, Sauber, RB, RB, and Alpine. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Alpine. Of course. Al- well, Alpine. I don't think, I don't I mean, see Alpine getting any points this week. That, that one's a given, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we all knew Alpine was yeah. the best. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's why what Haas did last race to get that one point could be like vital come the end of the season because yeah. i really think those five teams are going to struggle to get them yeah i mean um, so Sa- overall i think sauber and williams have had the moments where they've looked closest to being able to yeah. to challenge their way into that top 10 um with all this being like flyaways and only a two-week break in between i can't see like anyone just making instant leaps so i think the the general running order that we've seen over the first couple of races is pretty much going to be maintained at the minute. I don't think we'll we'll see much of a shift in that until what no. it's May time, isn't it, when we end up back here in Europe? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I like think everyone's another still, month or so. Everyone's still getting to know their cars. Like, yeah, for sure. It could be it could be that one or two teams find sort of way setup changes and things and find something in the setup that they can improve. But I don't think it's going to make anyone leap out of the bottom five into the top five. I think it's more. It, it's gonna it could shuffle the order just like the order in the top five is kind of like you know behind ferrari mclaren mercedes aston you feel like that could any of that could go any other than ferrari you know the yeah. Mer- ferrari mercedes aston fight could could go any which way at any particular mm-hmm. point but mm-hmm. the ferrari feel pretty nailed on for p2 at the moment and red bull are obviously categorically nailed on for me what so um yeah it's i think the the interesting is the dynamic of each five rather than like who's going to jump out yeah yeah of one five into another five kind of thing it tends to be a pretty chaotic race here there have have been a lot of chaotic races so i think this is definitely an opportunity for a lot of teams to um steal a result yeah yeah nice and then aforementioned and promised tire talk. Uh, this was <laughs> so you, you just gotta love it. You gotta love a bit of tire Everyone talk. Everyone's here it. for it. They, they're here for it. Uh, but yeah, this was the first race of the season using the softest compound available for the season, which is the C5. Um, in the past, we've not had much tire strategy here. It's been pretty much a dull one-stop race for everyone in that regard. I think the aim of when there isn't is, a safety car. But well, yeah, safety cars, of course, yeah. Uh, but yeah, standard strategy here is usually one stop. So I think um, Pirelli are probably trying to instigate a little bit more strategy by bringing these softer compounds than usual. Um, yeah, so I think it's interesting see how that plays out. Potentially makes a two stop a, a viable choice. I think. I think that's how it should be, right? It should be it that actually, there's but... not that there should be nothing between really a two stop and a one stop, or should be very a negligible enough amount between a one stop and a two stop to warrant you know someone having a go at having the two stop and seeing what they can do and it gives the drivers options of like you know it's to do with driver comfort how comfortable they are on a particular set of tires all that kind of thing um if they you know 
and it makes the driver more of a factor because the driver can say, well, I feel like I'm faster on this tire than other cars are on this tire. Yeah. So I can have an, imp- imp- it can have an impact on my race. So I think the more they do to open up strategy, especially given that it is mandatory to run two types of tire. I mean, if they can make it, make it as dynamic as possible, then, then why not? I'm open to, you know, yeah. uh, if it was me, I bring the softest compounds to every single race. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't think uh, that I get as many fans. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else anyone wants to add to storylines before we move on? I think that's it. I don't think so. Cool. I'm looking forward to this one. I always, I always enjoy this one. I, I do always enjoy his visit. Yeah. You're getting up for it? You're going to get up? We'll see how much I've recovered from this illness by the weekend. <laughs> that, Not looking yeah. forward to it that much. <laughs> really, it really depends on a few factors. That for me, I'm hoping I'll be feeling right as rain, and I'll be very much up for it. But I, we'll see. admittedly, that was one benefit to the Saturday races, where it didn't matter what, what I went and did on a Saturday night, I didn't have to get up to watch a race. Yeah. So mm. Sunday was an easy day. I think so we'll I'll. See. I'll probably watch it at the normal time, just on F1 TV. I'll just catch it yeah. myself rather than try and watch it live. I think, I think you know, part of like the beauty of F1 TV these days, do not to like you know plug them or, or give them free advertising or anything, but it is nice to be able to just open up your app, watch the race at your leisure. Watch at your leisure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I think even just any sports app like that, like I watch well, a lot yeah. of American sports, um, and to be able to open an app that doesn't ruin the score for you, doesn't plaster what's happened all over the front pages, and then just go, I would like the full version. Please start from the beginning as though it's happening live to me. Or yeah. I'd like the 30-minute abridged version, please. And then you're just yeah. like, you've got those options if you do yeah. need to catch it later in the day for some reason. I think that's yeah. a really positive thing. It's just a shame that there's so many territories locked out of F1. Yeah. Like, Races like this, it's like, I'm going to get up. I'm not going to look yeah. at my phone. I'm going to watch the race straight away. And then I'm going to go about my day and I can just do, do things and not worry every, about someone texting me or, or everything or I say in the group, or, I'll use code so that you don't understand what I'm saying, but Chris, I'll just <laughs> mute the group, mate. I'll just mute them. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> right. I'm going to move us on to predictions. So, um, yeah, we're going to go through the prediction stuff that we normally do here. If you are new, head to the website at backofthegrid.com and all the rules and information will be explained. You can also sign up there to join in. Very much worth doing because if you score a perfect five out of five any weekend, you are in um, eligible for a prize, which we've already had a couple of those already this season. So, yeah, um, terrifyingly. Yeah. Terrifyingly, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go through, we're going to predict fastest in Q3, the winner of the race, the first DNF, the number of finishers, and then random drivers finishing position for this week. So I'm going to just go very broad with this, like I think I did last time. Fastest qualifier and winner. Does anyone have anything to contribute other than a double Verstappen? I think qualifying is interesting. I don't think yeah. it's as clear cut as as it's really I, not. I think mm. it's the, the sensible prediction for me is Leclerc qualifying and then Verstappen win. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to do. Any advance on that from you, uh, Chris? I'm hmm. I'll say a signs fastest in Q3 just to be different. But I do think it's going to be very close between Red Bull and Ferrari. And I've tried that a couple of times already and it's failed, mate. So I am going for a safe old Verstappen double. <laughs> um, I think I think Verstappen's scraped pole both times. I don't th- and I don't think true. he's had a, he, yeah. he's, he's definitely been, fallible he's, in qualifying. I this mean, year, it seems. there was there was a there was a point in some of the qualifying qualifying sessions now yes i know before the keyboards start hammering away q3 ended up being faster but there was a q1 session at the start of the season where like everyone was basically within a second of each other by the end of that session and don't get me wrong the red bulls the ferraris turned the wick up a bit and went like another eight tenths faster or whatever it was but to have a q1 session where alpine are in within one second of the the teams at the front like this Qualifying's the... pretty close this year. <laughs> yeah, despite, it only takes a couple of despite mistakes. Despite the crappy race pace for a lot of teams, like there's there's something to be played for in qualifying. But this is the insane thing about um, I don't know if you've seen this last week. Um, there's been another interview with James Vells when he was talking about kind of 
what Williams were like, well, what they're kind of like now after he sort of inherited them. Um, and how, you know, they were literally using an Excel spreadsheet to track the parts list. And there were moments yeah. where like they, people didn't even know where in the factory certain parts were and people were, like scrabbling around trying to find them because they weren't tracked properly. It's like dad's garage, isn't it? Like, Yeah. And they literally had a car just ready in time for testing. And that car is within, I mean, in qualifying, the Williams was within what, a second and a half of the Red Bull? Hmm. Like yeah. it's mental, isn't it? The margins to go from scrabbling around trying to find parts off an Excel sheet versus one of the slickest operations that's ever existed in the sport, and the difference there is like a second and a bit. Yeah, it's Mad. wild, Mad. absolutely wild. So, who's first DNF? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to not go with the obvious choose on the australian drivers um i'll okay. say i'm gonna say magnuson okay uh so i am not going to go for my usual home driver or home team situation so i'm not saying anything like that um i am however going with a driver who was pretty much part of one of the first dnfs if not the first dnf last year and that's ocon um mm. Because if you remember, those two came together that was coming out of turn talk. two, didn't they? Yeah. Um, but I, I, honestly, I can see something like that happening again or just the car being utter rubbish, one or the other. Ocon mm. does love going side by side through tight corners on a street circuit. <laughs> yeah. Now then. Um, <laughs> I think the Haas's are a little bit too fast to be first DNF. I think... The Saubers keep their noses clean for the most part, or have been so far. Um, Alpine definitely could be some argy bargy. RB for sure could be some argy bargy. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say okay. Sonoda. Okay. Sonoda for Chris. Number of finishes. I'll Stu. open. Uh, sorry, Stu. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I apologize. It's been. It's all right. It's been eight it's been, years. I should should know by been, now which one. It's also been a long, to. long day as well. <laughs> true, yeah. true that. <laughs> uh, yeah, number of finishers. I want to open the bid in here with a sixteen. I did want to go a bit higher than this originally, but I think there's some tight sections with walls either side that I think might claim a victim or two over this weekend. So I'm going sixteen here. Do you remember how many it was last year? <laughs> Number of finishes. Like 14 in the end. Yeah, 12, it pretty 12, low. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. crazy low. I mean, it's not going to... That, that's it's just, not going to be that's that. that. I don't think we're going to get the levels, yeah. you know, the levels of chaos we did last year. I mean... It is a race of attrition, yeah. though. Yeah. I'm going to go 17. Okay. I'll go the other side then and say 15. Interesting. Okay. like it. And our random driver for this week has been drawn as the one and only Mr. Lando Norris. Any any bids to open this one up? Um, sixth. That's interesting. Um, that's exactly where I have him too. And for for context, I've already submitted mine into the website. So okay, can... that's good. <laughs> that is also exactly where he finished last year. Ah, that wasn't even premeditated on that basis. I just kind of had a feeling. <laughs> In fact, I'll tell you what, Tom, since you've got sixth, I'm going to go seventh instead. Are you sure? Yeah, since you've already got sixth, I'll change the seventh. Well, well I was going to go the other way and say fifth. fifth so. if it's the... Oh, there we go then. Lovely. This has gone I mean, it really nice. It well. all works yeah. out beautifully. Brilliant. So, as I mentioned there, you can submit your predictions through the website. So head to backofthegrid.com. There's also information there on how to join our fantasy league. So we're currently running one through Grid Rival and one through the um, the official F1 fantasy game. So the codes to join are there, the links to join are there. Get involved with those as well because we do recap like best of each league and who's leading throughout the season. So okay. opportunity for shout out if you're, if you're doing well there. Uh, right. And also, oh, do yeah. not forget, being Australia... Everything's happening earlier than usual, so yes. make sure you get your predictions in. Unless you're you Australian, <laughs> and then technically just have to do them at a regular leisure. time. <laughs> <laughs> right, inbox, gentlemen. Is keep it saying now. Stay, stay out. Box, box, box. Hey, man. Um, I'll take the first one. Um, Charlotte Taylor says, as a Lewis fan. 
Should I be concerned about his form? The last couple of races last season and the beginning of this season have been difficult for him. Is he going down the Seb Vettel route of mistakes creeping into his racing or is he just lacking confidence in the car? Mm. Mm. I think I think Lewis Hamilton has spent so much time racing for wins. I feel like he starts to lose interest a bit when he's not in that position. I feel like for many, many years, we've seen Lewis Hamilton at 100% and he's incredible. The last couple of years, I think we've maybe seen him at like 80 or 90%. Like he's Ooh, never really... He's ne- that, that, that <laughs> maybe that's a little too low, but like I don't think he really switches it on and gives it everything when he's racing for fifth place, you yeah. know? Yeah, and I mean, on that note, I would say that um, there is a, a slight comparison to make to Seb in that regard. Like, Seb at Red Bull was focused, determined, like, on it. There was a time where Seb at, like, Ferrari had clearly just lost interest in, like, knew that team couldn't give him what he was after yeah. and was looking elsewhere and obviously ended up at Aston for a while and realised that wasn't working out and ended up retiring. So, like, Lewis's eyes have clearly gone looking elsewhere in exactly the same fashion. If Ferrari can't give him something that lets him challenge for wins again, I think not, like, a direct comparison to Seb's sort of time in Formula 1, but there's an element of similarities there that these drivers are like the top of their sport, the top of their entire profession. And if they're not competing for wins, like there is that sort of element of just that disconnection, that loss of interest. Like, I mean, even, even people like Kimi Raikkonen, like, yeah, fair enough. He's, he had his championship and he had his time in race winning teams and was top tier performance, but, there was a notable difference in his time yeah. at like Alfa Romeo. Well, yeah, look at Alonso. Alonso at McLaren yeah. and Alonso at Al- uh, Aston Martin is two different yeah. drivers, I think. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, and I don't, oh, uh, early, I don't... early McLaren, anyway. As, towards yeah. the end of McLaren, he, he, he booked his ideas a bit. Up a bit. Definitely, yeah. Early days. He was... I don't think I'd say there's mistakes necessarily creeping into Lewis's drive. No, I think, I, don't, I think he's still... I, yeah. I think, I think the, er- the errors or the issues in his driving you see i think are more from the lack of confidence in the car or in the car not doing what he wants it to do than errors in the way he's driving necessarily yeah i agree with that i think it's probably more you know you're so used to your car doing certain things and then suddenly it isn't doing them then that's that's when mistakes creep in because you have to adjust a lot of your behavior to to match the new behavior of the it's car it's where and- all ricardo struggles came from like a way of driving and and a way, you know, have, having to drive in a way that doesn't feel natural and having to think about it more yeah. rather than it just being instinct. And I think that's yeah. kind of part of the issue for sure. Yeah. yeah. Next one. Next one. Simple question from Ben Green. Can Horner survive? Oh, yeah. Um, Why not? Simple answer. Yes, he can. I mean, who knows at this point? Like, yeah. so the, the latest on it is that the person who made the accusations against him are is um disputing the findings because the the Red Bull investigation dismissed the claim he didn't actually find him guilty or not guilty he just dismissed the claim yeah so I, I, is... it really annoys me that the media report cleared him all the time yeah he wasn't he wasn't yeah. cleared he was they, just they dismissed, dismissed they dismissed the claim yeah. it wasn't it was never clear yeah. so yeah she is um disputing that and she's also asked the FIA for an investigation apparently originally went through the FIA's kind of whistleblowing sort of service um, and now an official complaint has been made to the FIA. Um, and I mean, like Christian Horner and a lot of people at Red Bull keep just sort of saying, oh, you know, we want to draw a line to this and go racing. But like, it's he not doesn't get works, to decide mate. that. No, yeah, like, it's not your yeah. decision. Yeah. Um, you, you, sooner or later. You, you want, is... <laughs> what you want would suit you, wouldn't it? It'd be, it'd be lovely for you. <laughs> exactly, that. yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this is going to get worse for Red Bull before it gets better. Um, I don't think they can just keep trying to brush it under the carpet. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the media are having it, aren't they? That's the thing. No one's having No, it, exactly. So um, it's not going away. 
And I think if this does end up, I mean, ultimately I can see this ends up going to an actual court at which point they can't hide behind things. Everything will be laid out for everyone to see. So I think eventually we will find out right now. It's still, even like last week, there were like day to day, just like a new rumor that, Max is going to leave the team, and the next day, like, no, that was nonsense. Christian Horner's going, and the next day, no, that's nonsense. He's but help Mark, like every yeah, every single day, there's a new rumor, and it's just like so tiresome. But just like I just want some facts now, and actually, actually draw a proper line under it, not yeah. the one that people involved are asking for. And and of course, it doesn't help him that they're winning everything. So people are obviously mm. naturally wanting to see that team suffer in some capacity. Of one course, way or another. yeah. So you know, that's another factor, I think. But yeah. That's that's bad. All I've got to say about it. Yeah, yeah. Right, and that wraps us up for this week. Um, as we said before, a little bit of a shorter one, but it's kind of worked out all right. Got a little bit more focus on storylines and some detailed answers for some inbox, so it's worked quite well. Um, if you'd like to follow us on any of the socials, just search back of the grid. We're on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and X formerly known as Twitter, as most people say these days. Um, you can head to the website as well. If you want to reach out and get in touch with us, there is a contact form on there, as well as all the stuff for Predictions League we've already talked about. Um, if you are watching this via YouTube, please remember to like and subscribe. That helps out tons for that platform with it being a newer thing for us. This is our first full season on there. so Yeah, we had a yeah, good episode I, last week as well. Yeah, any, anything, us, and, and obviously, as some of you will have seen, you know, we'll, we'll respond to comments, stuff like that. We'll take inbox from comments, so don't forget to interact there as well. Uh, and then if you want to get involved with the Discord, you probably heard it mentioned fairly often throughout episodes as we talk to chat in there live. If you want to get involved with that, head to patreon.com forward slash back of the grid and that will give you all the information on how to get signed up to our Patreon, which then gives you access to the Discord and you know other bits and pieces. So yeah, head there for that. Um that is everything. So go That's and the enjoy admin the- done. <laughs> that is the that is the yeah that is the scripture bit done. So um yeah go and enjoy the Australian Grand Prix uh, and we will see you next week to review it all. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Do a stop. <laughs>